Good morning and welcome to Powerful Day Prophetic Ministries with George Dello coming to you with 15 minutes of truth for revival. And uh, we just want to pick up from our last video when we talked about the efficacy of Christ's blood, that uh, uh, Christ's sacrifice was sufficient to accomplish God's purpose, to do what the law could not do, to bring us into an eternal redemption so that God can bring us into an intimate personal relationship with him and actually dwell inside of this temple. So today I want to look at another part of this uh, when it concerns the efficacy of the blood of what it actually accomplished. Because again, uh, that, that um, uh, efficacy of his blood produced a perpetual cleansing that uh, uh, brings us to a place where uh, once it is done, as we looked at the scripture in Hebrew last week, once it's done, it's finished. There's no more need of another sacrifice. We had, uh, he said, if the law could have done this, they could have stopped the sacrifice. They wouldn't have to kill any more animals. Uh, there wouldn't be any more blood needed to be shed because that's what Christ came to do. In Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38 and 39, once God's work is done, and, and again, you have to read, uh, the book of Hebrews to, to go back to listen to those other videos I've been doing through the book of Hebrews because it lays out this whole plan of redemption and what Jesus came to do. So when we get to Hebrews chapter 10 towards the end of it. It says, now the just, the, the just, those that have been justified, those that have been brought into this relationship with God shall live by faith. But if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. So he says, once we, once Christ's work is done in us, we now live a life of faith. We walk daily in a life of faith. It's like Paul says, I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. The life I now live in this flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This is what he's talking about. We live by faith. We, we Every day. See, Christianity is not a, you know, a shot in the arm and you're good to go. Christianity is a is an ongoing journey. It, it, it is a from from the time we get saved to the, the day we're in heaven. It's a continual working and and uh, a life of living that by faith every single day. If you look at a lot of the words that uh, talked about believing in the New Testament, you'll find it's in the present tense. You believe and you keep on believing. Now, notice what he says here in Hebrews. If anyone draws back, you see, again, uh, it's, it's not God forsakes us. We depart from God. That's the issue. So to, to prevent that from preventing uh, uh, this, this going back, uh, we live a life of faith every minute of every day, our faith in Christ. And again, you can look at uh, First Peter when he talks about we should add, uh, uh, Second Peter, we should add to our faith. We should add to it. So what? So we don't stumble or fall. Okay. And 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 so no, it's a, it's a continual growth process that we have to that we step into where we're being transformed from every day, from day to day. We continue in the things of God. We continue in word. We continue in prayer. We continue in devotion and consecration uh, to 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 the Lord every day. So he says, but we are not of those who draw back to perdition. And that word perdition means uh, it has to do with lawless, uh, with lostness. Uh, he says, we don't draw back. We, we don't stop believing. We don't quit continuing the things of God. He says, but we are of those who believe to the saving of the soul. In other words, it's like Jesus talked about in Matthew 24. You in, they who endure to the end will be saved. Endure to the end. How do we endure to the end? By living a daily life of faith. In, in what Christ has done in us and through us. So uh, if we don't draw back from faith in Christ, the blood that washed our hearts from, from sin continually keeps us clean the rest of our days. So in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, uh, John said this, says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, that was we walk a life, a life in, in the spirit of God. We live a life of faith being led by the Spirit of God. If we walk lives in the light, we have fellowship with one another, 
We have fellowship with the Father. We have fellowship with the Son. We have fellowship with the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. In fact, we should live in continual communion and fellowship with the Lord. So he says, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Not some, but all sin. All sin. That word all means every, every part. It cleanses us from all sin. Now let me read this in the Amplified Bible because, again, the, 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 the uh, New King James doesn't bring out the, the tense of this. In, in uh, 1 John 1, 9, he says, if we freely admit that we have sinned and confess our sins, he is, uh, uh, and, and this is in, in, in uh, uh, verse 9, he is faithful and just. He is true to his own nature and promise and will forgive our sins, dismiss our lawlessness, and continuously cleanse us from all on righteousness, everything not in conformity to his will, in purpose, thought, or action. So that word is in continuous in the present tense. It's, it's continuous. He continues, as we walk in a light, the blood of Christ keeps us continuously cleansed from all sin. And, 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 and so that's, again, how we maintain that walk of righteousness with God. We maintain our relationship with God, walking by faith, what Christ has done for us on a daily basis. So that word cleanse, okay, it, and, and I'm going to read this to you uh, uh, from, this This comes from uh, Vincent's word studies. The Greek word cleanse here means not only forgives, but removes. When you cleanse something, what do you do? You, 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 you take it away. You wash it. You, you remove it. If there's, if there's a stain and you cleanse it, you remove the stain. You cleanse it. You take it away. The whole idea is to remove it. Okay. So when he talks about cleansing from all sin. He's talking about the wash it away, the removal of that sin. And notice again what he says. All sin. All sin. Okay. From all sin. All unrighteousness. Okay. Anything that's not of God. So it means uh, not only forgive, but removes. And uh, if you look at this in some of these other scriptures, he, he reiterates this over and over again through the New Testament. Uh, for instance, in Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us, Christ gave himself for us. He died for us that he might redeem us from what? From every lawless deed, from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people is us for good works, to purify us, to make us pure, to make us holy, okay? It, it takes everything away, all the lawlessness. It takes all of the impurities, okay? In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22, and according to the law, almost all things are purified, how? With blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Remission, again, meaning to remove, to take away, to, to deliver from, okay? so so. The, the blood of Christ brings about this removal, this cleansing, this purifying from sin. In, in Hebrews 9, 14, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through eternal spirit offers himself for that spot, or, uh, spot to God, cleanse your conscience from dead works to serve a living God? How much more will the blood of Christ do than what the law can do? Because why? Because it's completely efficacious. It takes away every spot and blemish of sin from us, okay? Uh, uh, when you look at this, the, the, uh, the, the, there's an obvious difference, okay, uh, be, between forgiveness and cleansing. The, 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 there's two different words here used here in this verse. There's a difference between forgiveness. Forgiveness has to do with the judicial acts of God whereby he pardons. He forgives us for what we have done. But cleansing has to do with going to the very root of the problem, the very source of the problem, to remove the stain, the, the corruption, the defilement of that sin. And this comes by not repenting, not by, by forgiveness, but by cleansing, okay? And so, uh, the, and again, this present tense, that is, that, is, that is a cleansing that is present and continuous, okay? And uh, 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 continually working as we live a life of faith, as we walk in the light, as we are led by the Spirit, who's not going to lead us into sin. He's always going to lead us in righteousness. Okay, so uh, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter uh, 13, verse 12, 
Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood or make pure or make holy with his own blood suffered outside the gate. Matthew 5, 8, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Again, here we are, pure, purified. He, he, he removes uh, every lawless deed and purifies. He cleanses. He makes us clean, okay? And this, and this applies to our body, soul, and spirit. 1 John 3, 3, and everyone who has this hope in him, in Christ, purifies himself just as he is pure. How pure was God? How, how pure was Jesus? If there was no spot or blemish. We're to be pure the same way Jesus is pure. Why? Because his blood provides the means to make us free from all sin. We are purified from all sin, from all lawlessness, okay? 1 John 1, 7, again, uh, if we walk in the light, see in the light, we have fellowship with one another. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin, from all sin, okay? Takes away all our sin. 1 John uh, uh, 1, 9, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So when he talks about all sin, again, in, in Vince's word study, he defines that as the, the principle of sin. That's inside of us. Paul, Paul discovered in Romans chapter 7, before he was born again, and he was a Pharisee under the law, he found out there was something inside of him that made him do what he didn't want to do. And he says, what did he discover? He discovered that there was sin in him. Not just what he did, but there was sin literally in him. We all are born with sin in us by the seed of Adam, okay? So, so the Bible is telling us that, that Jesus came with his blood to take that away, to remove it, to purify it, to cleanse it, all sin. Because something's not pure unless it's free from sin, okay? To have a pure heart means there's no sin in your heart. If, it's, if there's sin in your heart, it's not pure. And therefore, you cannot see God, okay? If your heart's pure, there's nothing in it, okay? There's no sin in it, okay? So he says the principle of sin in all of its forms and manifestations, it is removed, it is purified, it is washed, it is cleansed by the blood of Jesus, okay? And again, when he talks about the word all, you can compare this to other scriptures in the New Testament that, that use the same word, uh, the same Greek word, we talked about having all joy, all patience, all wisdom, all diligence, okay? So again, this is what uh, Jesus came to do. So in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 22 to 23, he tells us how do we get to this place and how is it done? He says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. Again, we're talking about, we're talking about grace and faith. Let us draw near with a full a heart in full assurance of faith. What does that mean, full assurance of faith? We know that we know that what Jesus promised, what Jesus did is done. And by faith, we take present possession. That we, we, we appropriate what he did because we of our faith, our assurance that Jesus it cannot lie. He's a faithful God. He does what he says he will do. He says, having, have, doing what? What are we believing for? Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who is promised is faithful. Okay, in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 24. So what he's telling us is if Jesus promised to do this, he's going to do it because God is faithful to do everything he promised to do. And what did he promise to do? To cleanse us from all sin, purify us from all sin. And, and that word, the sprinkle from evil conscience, con conscience, he's talking about this qualification for a right approach to God. It is it, just the same way in the Old Testament, the priests were sprinkled with a sacrificial blood and they were washed with water before they become the priest, because the, before they can minister, okay? Well, we are called as the priest now. Every believer becomes a priest of God. So what is he telling us? We've got to be what? Sprinkled with the sacrificial blood and wash before we can be ministered, before we can carry the purpose. Why? Because God has to has to uh, qualify us for this inheritance. Okay, what is the qualification? The blood of Jesus to wash us from all sin. So just as those those uh, priests in the Old Testament could draw near to God by by by, by the blood, 
and, and, and the water. He says, in the same way, he purges us. He removes that, that, that heart of sin. He, he goes right to the root of the, of the morality of man and removes, he washes, he cleanses that in the blood of a lamb so that we can now approach God. We can come God with, with, with consciences are purged, with a clean conscience, with, with, with not even the conscience of sin. Because why? Because our hearts are pure, okay? We have to have hearts that have experienced the effects of Christ's sacrifice, okay? Whereby he not just pardons us, but he brings moral renewal. He makes us into a brand new creation, free from sin. He delivers us from a legal spirit. He does a complete cleansing and washing to make us a people that are pure, so thereby we have clean hands and pure hearts. And as he tells us in, in Matthew 24, who can ascend in the hill of the Lord or who can stand in his holy place? Well, again, he has clean hands and a pure heart. They are the ones that will see God. Those are the ones that will enter into the kingdom of God. That's why he tells us without holiness, no one should see the Lord. You've got to have this work done. And again, he takes away all sin. There's not a spot or blemish left. And uh, you can see this, that this was the very purpose of Christ's coming in uh, Ephesians chapter 5. And let me just close with this last scripture um, uh, just to show those to you in uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and gave us the Lord. He gave himself for her that he might sanctify her and cleanse her with the washing of water word that he might present her to himself. In other words, he's going to sanctify, make us holy in order that he can present us to himself, okay, as a glorious church. Now, watch what he says. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. In other words, she would have clean hands and a pure heart because the blood takes away all sin. All sin. Amen. Again, this is George Dello, Power for Today Prophetic Minister, coming to you with 15 minutes of truth for revival. We need revival. Revival means getting right with God, getting clean hand and pure heart so that we can walk with God in these last days and become the people, the glorious church that Jesus is coming back for. Amen. Then let me just uh, uh, just say uh, all of these videos you can find on my YouTube page uh, under George Dello and also on my Facebook page. And you can go back and listen to these and uh, get the truth that's going to set you free and be ready and prepared as part of that glorious church for, God, for the Lord's coming because he's coming soon. The signs are all around us. So God bless you. Have a wonderful day in the Lord. And I'll catch you next time in Jesus' name.